Jen Hope, what's up? Sebastian here, and I just wanna welcome you to Valley Creek Students. Even here online, we are a movement of hope for the city and beyond. And what we're gonna do right now is we're gonna take a look at this weekend's message. And if you haven't caught that yet, you can always click the link below in the description to catch up on what we've been talking about over this weekend. And if you're looking for ways to get connected, like, man, maybe you need prayer for anything, we would love the opportunity to pray for you, or you wanna get connected into student circles, man, go ahead and click right here for all that information for Valley Creek students. But right now, can you go ahead, prepare your heart, because God has something great for you. So go ahead, lean in, because it's gonna be amazing. What's up, Valley Creek students, and welcome to Student Circles. We're in week two of our Heart of a King series. And I just need you to know that this is super important for us, like big important. This series is about King David and what it looks like to live with the heart of a king. And during this series, we've invited you to join us for the reading plan as we walk through 1st and 2nd Samuel together and see the heart of a king played out in David's life. See, we were created to live with the heart of a king, to live a life that is royal and noble. And last week we learned that living royal is not elite or selfish, it's humble and selfless. And Jesus is the greatest example of what it looks like to live with the heart of a king. Someone who was selfless and uplifted those around him. He was the greatest servant. And one of his greatest messages to us was to repent. He said it all the time, repent, the kingdom of God is here. Change your mind, there's a better way to live. So as we continue this message, can we even right now position our hearts to maybe think different? Because the heart of a king is the heart of passion. I mean, look at 1 Samuel 13, 14. David was now called to live a life of passion, to engage in battle, to help create the future. And I need you to hear this. So are you. David had passion. As a shepherd, when a lion approached his sheep, he didn't run scared, he attacked the head on and he won. On another day, a bear tries to do the same thing. What does David do? He doesn't run scared, he attacks it head on and he defeats it. Later, it would be Goliath. And what does David do? He doesn't run scared. Even though that's what the entire Israeli army was doing, David picked up his five smooth stones and he attacked Goliath head on and he won. David had the heart of a king, a heart of passion, one that created the future and echoed hope. So we know it's totally a heart thing. But what about all those verses in the Bible that say things like, when you love God with all your heart, when you seek God with all your heart, Whatever your hand finds to do, do it with all your might. See, it's not just a heart thing, it's an all your heart kind of thing. In other words, a heart that is full of passion. The problem is we cannot be both apathetic and passionate about something at the same time. In fact, apathy is kryptonite to your passion. Apathy wants to steal your passion. And if we're honest, this last season, a lot of things have happened and a lot have changed. Things are not the way maybe we hoped or expected that they would be it. Maybe you've allowed some apathy in your own heart in this season. How do you know you're apathetic? When you're no longer doing it with your whole heart. When you're no longer passionate about it. Passion literally means something that you're willing to suffer for. So what are you passionate about? Do you get hype about coming to student circles or do your parents have to help you see the value? Do you get hype about getting into the presence of God or do you barely engage? In other words, are you in the game? Or have you moved off to the sidelines or maybe out into the stands or even worse, maybe you've taken off your jersey and just gone home. And the thing is, it's super easy to want to blame everyone else for our apathy, isn't it? Like it's coronavirus that took everything away from me and ruined my school experience. It's, it's my parents who don't understand me. It's the someone else who mistreated me at church. I mean, fill in the blank. We can come up with a thousand reasons, but our outside circumstances don't have authority over our internal realities unless we give it to them. Apathy is something we allow in our hearts. That's why Proverbs 4.23 says to guard your heart. When you have a heart of passion, you live for the good of others and the glory of God. But when you allow apathy in your heart, you start to use others for your own good and your own glory. You are generation hope, a generation that refuses to be defined by anything other than the hope of Jesus. So let's choose passion and kick apathy to the curb. So here's three thoughts from the weekend message to help us do just that. The first one is do the heart work. Once David realized his apathy, he starts doing the hard work. Look at Psalm 51, 12 and 14. 
David realizes that sin puts the fire of passion, it puts it out in his life. So he confesses and he repents. The hard work is the hard work. Being willing to acknowledge, confess, and repent from those things in your life that are stealing your passion. Whatever it is that you're allowing in your life, I promise it's not worth it. Maybe it's something you've kept hidden, but it's stealing your passion and it's not worth it. So let's confess and repent. Let's live with the heart of a king, fully engaged and full of passion. The second thought was just do what you used to do. David went back and started doing all the things he once did when he was passionate. Think about when you were most passionate about Jesus. What were you doing in that season? Probably engaging the Bible regularly? Probably walking with some godly relationships in a small group? Probably worshiping regularly? I mean, think about it. Whatever you were doing before that led to your passion, let's go back and do those things again. Are you more passionate today about Jesus than before? Or was there a time when you were more hyped to invite friends to church? Was there a time when you found more joy in the Word of God than you get from social media and Netflix? Was there a time when you were more excited to pray for your friends at school and now maybe not so much? Wherever you've accidentally moved into the sidelines, the stands, or even just left the game altogether, let's go back and do what we used to do when we were full of passion. Let's get in the game because the heart of a king is a heart that is fully engaged. The last thought from the weekend is this, move forward in faith. I know it's easy to let our emotions lead us. Our culture often makes it feel like our feelings are truth. If I feel this way, then it's okay. But letting our emotions lead the way is not how we move forward. We move forward by faith. And it's the difference between faking it and faithing it. I mean, not feel like coming to church right now or going to student circles or reading my Bible or praying for a friend or whatever it is, that might be real, but by faith, I'm gonna obey. I'm gonna choose to align my heart with God and I'm gonna activate my faith. I'm gonna walk in obedience one next step at a time. I start to move forward. I start to fill my heart with passion once again. I start to walk with confidence and purpose, way bigger than anything else I do with my life again. And as I activate my faith and choose to obey, I'm re-engaging in the battle. I'm getting off the sideline. I'm getting back into the game. I'm kicking apathy out of my heart and I'm choosing passion instead. Let's not live down to the world. Let's live up to the kingdom. You were created to live with the heart of a king, a heart full of passion. You long for it, you crave it. You have destiny written all over your life. And if you choose passion over apathy, you'll have it. So wherever you are today on your journey, let's choose to do the hard work as we confess and repent. Let's go back and do what we used to do when we were once passionate. And let's move forward in faith, choosing to activate our faith and fill our hearts with passion once again.